Hey, thanks for joining into today's webinar on the shoots and ladders of the writing process. My name is Sharon Plant and I know people will be jumping in as we go. Uh, please feel free to use the chat window to share questions that you think of along the way. Um, and hopefully we'll have a couple minutes at the end that I can jump into any of those questions uh, that you may have. You see the URL on the screen for access to these slides, but they will be uh, sent to you later if you don't happen to get that URL right away. Um, there'll be a quick 20 minutes of sharing some tips and tools that are out there to work through the writing process, which we know can be challenging for a lot of our students. So, oh, quick. Uh, just uh, if you were not part of last week's webinar, just a little bit of information about myself. Um, my name is Sharon Plant. I am the Chief Technology Integrator here at the Southport School. We are a school solely for students with language-based learning disabilities. Uh, I present here today as part of our new Southport CoLab, which is a collaborative of many organizations working to provide teacher training um, in several areas. You can certainly check out our website for more information on those opportunities, and hopefully you saw those when you signed up. I am active on Twitter, so if you happen to be on Twitter, I love sharing tips and tools out there and connecting with other educators to share resources. Hope to gain a lot from my friends today who are down at a great assistive technology conference that I didn't get to make it to this year. You can always reach out to me afterwards too if you come up with questions about some of the tools that are shared. Again, I'm just gonna kind of give an overview, not in depth in our short 20 minutes, uh, but hopefully gives you some things to explore and to look into. So one of the first things that when working with students on writing, funnily enough, is to actually teach them about the text-to-speech and speech-to-text in their device. This is important, particularly I find with our students with learning disabilities, is writing for many of them is a challenge for so many factors, and particularly spelling, idea formation, et cetera. But that idea that if they can dictate their writing off the bat, sometimes that is a great way to ease them into the process because they find success because they were able to speak their ideas. The same thing in able to listen to their own writing because often they can hear their own errors. They also enjoy hearing what they write. So those simple two things are the things I always start with our writing students at the beginning of the year just to get them started and Often that is really the great door to open for opportunities to grow. If you're a school that is using Mac-based devices, whether it be a laptop or iPad in the accessibility settings, first of all, Siri. Siri, that tool that many students don't realize they can just use to dictate their writing. They only think to ask crazy questions and jokes. It is an amazing tool that they can find that they can use in many tools and apps to dictate their writing on um, either a laptop or an iPad. Under the iPad, the speak selection and speak screen are great tools to teach kids how to listen to their writing. It's a little different under the accessibility options on a MacBook, but easily found under those settings. If students are using a Chrome browser or on a laptop or using a Chromebook, always starting out with Google Docs, voice typing. It is a great tool built right into Google Docs. It's also nice because it's a tool that many schools um, already have there and many students can access so it doesn't put a stigma on the use of dictation. Every student has the ability to use it. If they need a little bit more support with that, and I will speak about this a little bit more further along, but Read and Write for Chrome um, is a great add-on to the Google Docs and extension that provides that speech-to-text and text-to-speech um, within their tool. If you're in a Microsoft environment, Microsoft 365, their learning tools are really built throughout uh, all the Microsoft options. Uh, they've really put a lot of time and effort into building some great uh, learning tools into their products. You can definitely reach, to learn, reach out to them to learn a lot more, but um, the accessibility options have significantly increased in that Microsoft environment. I often talk about too when you're having students working with dictation is to get a great set of headphones that can really make a difference. Uh, we have found for some of the kids really starting to learn dictation, a boom microphone that puts the microphone in front of their mouth. It's a little easier than some of the, you know, like the iPhone headphones, but, and students kind of gain along the way. Um, but it can make a go a long way to one, having a lot of students dictating in a small space. 
um, that if they have the microphone, you can teach them that dictation doesn't need to be yelled at, it doesn't need to be, you know, something really loud, but everybody can do it at the same time and be successful. So when we start that writing process, we really get focused on mind mapping. And this is a really challenging step I know to work with many students on. They are very resistant because they just want to get writing because this is a lot of effort. Some of the tools we'll, I will talk about will add on to that a little bit more. Um, we are an iPad mainly based school and I am a big fan of Inspiration Maps, the iOS version, not the desktop version. I don't think they actually even support it anymore. Um, or MindNode is another great option out there. What is great about both of these options on an iOS device is once the planning is done within the tool, the mind map can be converted to an outline and exported into either a Google Docs or Pages document. So it takes the brainstorming already done, so the words that are already there, takes it into a document that students just need to edit, which is often a great uh, tool because they don't have to rewrite the words, which is why they're often resistant to brainstorming. If you're in the Google environment or a laptop environment, MindMeister is the only option that exists out there that will also do that same thing, that there is an ability to take the outline created in MindMeister and export it into a Google Doc and then can be edited from there. If you're working with younger students or I have some students, ADHD, they get a little lost with some of these tools because they're a little bit more elaborate. Poplet is a nice simple mind mapping tool. There's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. It cannot be exported out into a document, but it is a nice, just simple mind mapping tool. There's a great lot of resources on the Poplet website to use it in other areas. There is something to be said for really pushing mind mapping with students, because if they do it thoroughly, we can really show them how much simpler the writing process can be. If you have students who really need a little bit more significant support in the writing process, particularly younger students, they really need a more scaffolded process. There are some great tools. These are their apps, but there is a desktop software from Clicker. Uh, they're actually located in England and have a home office just down the road here in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, they are really robust tools that are, provide significant scaffolding. I really like them. Hard part I will say is the cost of the tools, but if students need them, they're definitely well worth checking out and reaching out to that company. So when we get into writing the process, we often have to layer in some other tools to help students out. The two big ones in this field are the text help that Read and Write for Chrome I mentioned before, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the tools built into there, and Don Johnston with their co-writer. So text help, again, is a great tool. It's actually free for teachers to read and write for Chrome, so something you can check out. It is a subscription for students. So in addition to the text-to-speech and speech-to-text, they have built-in word prediction. So that can be beneficial to students along the way. They have some other great supports built into that with highlighting that can create some organization. But if you really have students who really rely on that word prediction, it's really the tool that is going to help them get the most out of writing and it needs to be a step up for maybe what text help is doing or what is built in. That's when I would go to a tool like CoWriter. CoWriter's back end is really robust for that word prediction. They initially began years ago with having topical dictionary. So you could say, okay, I'm going to be writing about William Shakespeare, turn that on within the system. And so the words being predicted were more going to align to that topic. So about William Shakespeare. Now they have actually the last several years done it. So you can still turn those on specifically, but it will automatically start realizing what the student is writing about and adjust the word predictions that are coming across. So rather than kind of a general overall prediction that all our devices seem to do nowadays, it will be more specific to the topic, which can be really helpful. With text help, they also have launched a, in the last year or two, uh, RyQ, which is a process, a tool that layers in, again, has to be used as an extension, but it automatically assesses the student's writing as they are writing, giving feedback as it goes. It's pretty neat to see. I just saw it in action last week at a conference um, that it's really making that judgment and the real-time feedback uh, through that. Both of those tools from text help you, they have a great YouTube channel um, where you can really learn more about them. When we get into engagement for writing, there's a whole variety of tools out there. I'm just gonna talk about a few that I'm familiar with. One that got me started a few years ago was an app called Write About This, really great for elementary school age students. There's a free level and a paid level. It's 
was neat because it had photos with three varying captions. And so it was a really great photo prompt tool automatically built in with the prompts that students could engage with. Wasn't really great for my middle school age students. They luckily came out with Write About, which is a website really designed for middle school on up with various writing prompts. So if you're looking for ideas for writing prompts, these are great tools, lower or upper schools uh, to engage with. Along those same lines, a website that's been around for a while and I always forget until I end up needing some ideas, Read, Write, Think has a whole lot of resources for a variety of writing topics. That um, it's, So it's one that you may want to go to when you're looking for things. I find it particularly helpful when I'm trying to teach writing poetry, um, but really some other great uh, variety of prompts out there. And a tool that uh, I, I love for a variety of reasons, uh, Writable, it is device agnostic, so they use, it's web-based. They have a whole lot of scaffolds built in, but it's nice, it works with Google Docs, but the teacher can put in a prompt, they can build in a rubric, or there's already planned rubrics, there's some prompts um, to that. And so it, the writing process is right within the system. You can actually have students giving students feedback anonymously. You can have students assessing their own writing while you're doing the assessing on their writing. So there's a whole lot of interactive engagement through the writing process. Uh, and actually, they are a great company that if you're really looking to design something specific within the writing process, they are ready to respond um, on how to do that. So you can definitely reach out to them. They are wonderful to respond to uh, needs of teachers related to writing. Another way to engage students in writing can always be through images. This is a great site from the New York Times. They have what's going on in this picture can be used in a variety of academic areas, but I love using it in writing because it's beyond a written prompt. It's really getting students to think and discuss what's going on and then being able to write about what is there. You do have to be mindful to kind of check them first because there are some that I think are better for certain ages than others, but it's a great site to check out for ideas about writing. So we get to grammar checking. Uh, keep hoping that Google is going to build in a stronger grammar checker. It would think help a lot of us, but there are some variety of tools out there. Text help is building more into their tools, some of the grammar checking. So if a student is using that, that will help along the way. The two big ones out there for grammar checking are Ginger and Grammarly. I know some of the schools run into some of the FERPA and COPA compliances. Grammarly is not going to be compliant. So if that's an issue um, that we, which we would hope they would change, but it is a really great tool. I like Grammarly just because they have a third party keyboard for the iPads. So it works right within any tool to grammar check. Ginger, you have to go out into its site or its own tool for the grammar checking to happen. Keep in mind to instruct our students, the grammar checking is not perfect. I have taken pieces and put them into both and it's some have found some of the errors and not others, but is it just a great tool that can help students be a little bit more mindful of checking their work before they pass it along to us and finding some of those errors we know they can find. This is also its opportunity when I again remind students, oh, FERPA and COPA, those are the rules where um, some schools, it's less of an issue for us in independent schools than it is in the public schools where you have to be compliant um, with the accessibility and the data that companies uh, access um, when students are using their tools. It's kind of like the idea is that certain tools should not be signed in to students under the age of 13 um, without parent permission or school guidelines. So again, Grab Grammarly, Ginger, great tools. Um, but again, as I was saying, this is a time also I encourage students to listen to their writing because maybe they can find some of their errors. Then there's always the fun of publishing. Um, Book Creator's been around for a while. They have an app. It is a, also a web-based tool. If you're really into using Book Creator or want to know more and you happen to be on Facebook, they have an amazing Facebook group with teachers sharing ideas. There's also a lot of great resources. It's pretty basic and simple. Students can audio record, they can type, they can have images, they can have drawings. I was really excited when Pages kind of took their iBooks publisher and put everything directly into Pages. So kids can create books, they can create posters right within Pages. We've had some wonderful ha things happen with Pages and actually Keynote for our students publishing using the writing that they've already done. They are able to dictate and record themselves. They are adding in fun images and creating wonderful published works that can be exported as EPUBs and shared 
at home. So there's something to be said for helping students, you know, find that joy of writing by giving them something fun at the end to publish and animate and create. I also will always point out the fun, particularly with students who struggle with the idea of writing, is getting into digital storytelling. Uh, we had a student start here a number of years ago. It was a, really a struggle. Really, he, he was so school not happy <laughs> would be the best way to put it. And I got him into my room one day because he did like technology and dictation was hard for him because he also has a speech issue. So we just got into a tool like Puppet Pals and it was simply being able to have him create a story with animation and he could record himself telling the story. So it wasn't dictation because that wasn't gonna fully work for him. It was not gonna be fully accurate at that time. And it wasn't about creating paragraphs and mind mappings, but it was visually creating a story for him so he could learn the writing process a bit of beginning, middle, end through the idea of storytelling. So there's a variety of tools here. I don't have time to go into clearly into all of them, but these are ones that I, either I or I know other teachers have engaged with that allow students to, again, tell that story, they're using their words, it may be starting with the recording, and then it can be building into, yes, again, a production, as we, I talked on the last one about making a book. Here, take your pictures, draw an image of what you already wrote, record yourself reading what you wrote, and having a wonderful process at the end to highlight their work in a different way than just a piece of paper. I will say we do teach cursor here still at the Southport School. It is very important to that process of learning to read as we are in Orton Gillingham School. So if you happen to want to teach cursive and it is not something you would think of necessarily digitally, uh, there is a great iOS app, Cursive Writing Wizard. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, the kids, I've had middle schoolers who love to play with it. There are some whiteboard style tools like Explain Everything or Class Kick where a teacher could create what the student was supposed to do and trace over it. Same thing are some of our teachers do it with uh, the notebook software that would go on the interactive board. Um, but that idea that students can kind of do that big style writing or smaller style writing um, and get that going. Funnily enough, there's also that idea of, gosh, if we're talking about writing, talking about typing, and if we're talking about kids, with learning challenges that there is actually a typing app that does align to kind of reading instruction. And before I forget, when I was talking about the cursive app, if you have students on an iPad and they're using this cursive writing wizard or any tracing, there is a great tool, uh, a screen overlay from TAC screen, T-A-C screen, um, a woman who is actually dyslexic and her son is dyslexic, and they now make a removable overlay that's got texture to it. So it's a little bumpy, so it gives that sensory feedback to that process, kind of like what we do with shaving cream and sandpaper and sand, but can happen right on the iPad. So quickly getting back to typing, there's a whole lot of typing apps out there. I would, there's no one better than the other. I think it matters kind of environment, what kids engage with. But if you have a student who is still working on kind of those sound symbol skills, learning to read, learning to write, learning to spell, uh, this tap type read, there's cursive writing wizard and tax screen as I mentioned. But this tap, uh, touch type read and spell adds sounds to the typing process as they're learning to type there is good sound feedback it's nice kind of what i would refer to as purer sounds and the introduction of how the letters are introduced are similar to what a structured literacy instruction might be so if they're following wilson or again orton gillingham it just adds in some great other feedback separate from a typical typing program um, so it's just some students that i have that definitely need that additional feedback as they are learning to type um, something that you can check out that either through a school subscription or a single subscription, it is a subscription cost to use this. And quickly, just some grammar practice. These are some options that exist out there. Uh, no red ink and quill, probably more for your middle and upper schools, high schools, education.com and Grammaropolis are some great options to explore for lower schools. There's definitely free and paid options within both of them. And as I said, this is a lot of quick information, not something that I can go into depth today in our short 20 minutes, but just to give you a quick introduction to some things that are out there that you might want to explore. This UART is, channel is to a YouTube channel where I've curated videos by either companies like Text Help or others who have demonstrated these products. It might give you a little bit more in depth. 
So again, feel free to go there to learn more about some of these tools or other tools that I may not have gotten to today uh, that might give you a bit more introduction. I always encourage people to reach out to the companies. Many companies are eager to share with you about their tools. Definitely check and see if they're on Facebook or Twitter if there's some usable ideas um, or to reach out. And if, again, if you're on Twitter, two great hashtags that where these tools are always being talked about as well as others. AT chat, which is always going on, but they have a great conversation. Actually, will be tonight at eight o'clock um, and Eastern time and ed tech chat, which is Mondays at eight o'clock. So there's a lot of resources to there for you to explore, kind of quick to go. Again, you can always reach out more to the CoLab and set up for some time to learn more about these and ways to implement them. Um, and hopefully this gave you some information today to kind of get yourself started and thinking about maybe things that you had not in, explored or known about. I will take a couple minutes. If anybody has questions, please use the chat box and type them in there. Um, and if you've kind of gotten what you've gotten today, I so appreciate you taking the 20 minutes this afternoon to spend with me um, and hopefully gave you some tools to help out. You will get the slides. Um, oh, and eight o'clock tonight, AT chat is at 8 p.m. tonight if you're on Twitter, but it, they have actually a live conversation with specific questions that will be going on. I know actually they'll be doing it live from the Assistive Technology Conference. Um, but you can always follow the hashtag uh, to where it's a lot of great people in the field sharing about different resources to support kids with learning differences. But again, you will receive these slides and uh, the video as well, so you can go review it. But if you ever have more questions, please feel free to reach out so we can set up some more time to help you help your students uh, through the writing process. Jennifer, I see your thing. Yes, those will be sent out. And then if the other student gets sent out, I will make sure they get back out to you. But I know we just uh, talked earlier today that the slides and the video will be coming to you. All right, thanks for joining in again this afternoon uh, and appreciate you taking the time. Good luck with working with your students through the writing process.